make sure we're, I'm, I'm on, that's great. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to, oh, I didn't pause. Let's try it again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Blackburn Church. We are thrilled that you are worshiping with us today, either here in the sanctuary or in the fellowship hall or online. Welcome, a special welcome to our guests and visitors. We have Blue Friendship booklets at the end of each pew, so if you will please pass them down and then back to the middle so that we can make sure that we know that you are visiting with us today. Jacob, do you have some announcements for us? I do. Thank you, Maureen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a couple of announcements and I'll be referencing your green bulletin insert, so if you want to go ahead and snag that, that would be wonderful. We have a lot of things that are going on uh, as we're getting ready for our fall semester. can't believe that that's right around the corner. I was talking to a teacher and I think some classes start on Tuesday. That blew my mind, blew my mind. Don't know where the summer goes. Um, but if we're following that announcements page, the first thing that we have is that we have a young adults barbecue, which is Wednesday, August 17th at 6.30. There's some more information there on the bulletin, but there's also a sign up sheet in the fellowship hall. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and sign up for that. Uh, we also have a, uh, a student movie night. Anyone is invited to go to that. Um, you are more than welcome to, but we're going to be watching the movie WALL-E. That's what they chose. So if you want to watch that, uh, we'll have popcorn, bottled water. If you want to bring any extra snacks for me, you are more than welcome to. <laughs> uh, there's some more information, uh, and there's also a sign-up sheet. Please sign up by this Sunday uh, if you're going to be able to make it to that so that uh, we know how much stuff to get. We also have, uh, on the other side of that announcements page, um, we're beginning the, the process of planning for fall wiggle worship as well as Sunday school. If you are interested in uh, teaching or helping with our wiggle worship age students, or if you're interested in helping out with Sunday school, then you can either see myself or our director of ministries, Lisa, and we'll get you plugged in for that as well. In about five or so minutes, I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna do a children's message and then after the children's message, any students that are ages three to seven can follow me back for wiggle worship. And it's an age appropriate lesson that's usually based on the gospel reading. And then they will be uh, delivered back, delivered is a weird word. They will be <laughs> escorted back uh, to uh, their families uh, right around offering time just before communion. If you have any questions in regards to youth or family ministries, you can also see me after service. Thanks. Jacob. So Pastor Ken is on vacation today, and we are excited to have with us Pastor Omen, and you will read a little bit about him in the bulletin, and just a huge thank you for being with us today. So a couple more announcements. Uh, Didi and Serafina, our uh, missionaries in the Congo, will be with us next Sunday, and hopefully, weather pending, we will be outside with our outdoor worship area. And we also get to have lemonade and ginger snaps next Sunday. And it looks like those, um, there's a free will donation that will go to the Tunnel to Towers. Then, on August 28th, we will be having our annual congregation picnic. So there's sign-ups for that, so please make sure if you're interested in joining us. And I believe that's another outdoor <coughs> worship Sunday. And I think that is it for announcements. So with that, um, please stand if you are able and face the baptismal font. And join us with the confession on page 94 at the front of your red hymn book. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you 
and given ourselves into the power of sin, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Continue on page 138 at the front of your red hymnal. And today we will speak the Kyrie. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. We continue with the prayer of the day, which is found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and living God, 
you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. seated and we invite the children forward for the children's sermon. Come on up, come on up, have a seat if you like. Come on up. Oh. Well, good morning. I also know we, oh, there they are. We have several in the fellowship hall. Come on up. Good to see you. Good morning, Bryn. Good morning, Connor. Have a seat. Well, good morning. Today, we're going to talk about something that shows up in all three passages of Scripture, which we'll read in just a second. Hey, come on. Yeah, come on. You can sit right here if you'd like. I'm Mr. Jacob. It's good to see you. All right. I need some help. <laughs> come on, buddy. What is... We're going to talk about fear today. So I printed off something that I'm afraid of. So you need to help me out. What is this? It's a big, scary, kind of cute spider with big googly eyes. When I was your age, I was very afraid of spiders. Right? So what do you think I did when I saw a spider? Screamed. Screamed. <laughs> that is a good guess. Run. Uh, I did not try to kill it. I asked my mom or my dad to try to kill it. If I knew there was a spider in a room, I would go around that room so that I wouldn't have to go in it. Right? It is okay to be afraid of stuff. Right? If it's a healthy fear, if we uh, have a healthy amount of fear for something, God gave us fear to protect us. That's why we don't do silly things. Exactly, yes. But when it comes to things like spiders, we probably don't have to be afraid, but we can still ask our moms or our dads or our grandpas or grandmas to help us with those fears, just like we can today. And when we're afraid of things, you know who else we can go to to talk to? Very good job. We can go to Jesus and we can ask him for help. And you know one of the ways that we do that? Is we pray. Would you do that with me now? Let's pray. I kid you not, there's a spider on my leg right now. <laughs> you see that? All right, we're not going to freak out. We're not going to be afraid. Right, I'm a dad in Kansas. So, all right. We're just not going to look at it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray with my eyes open today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, Charlotte. All right. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for mom and dad. We thank you for grandpa and grandma. We thank you that they are there for us when we are afraid. And we thank you that Jesus is there for us too. We thank you and we help, I pray that you help us to face our fears and to trust in you this week. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the worship. What about the spider? Yeah, we're going to deal with that later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. God has a great sense of humor. The first lesson is from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring. And so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. 
and he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The second lesson is from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And as he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have not let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I heard a couple of people comment about Jacob. Uh, the Lord has a sense of humor, doesn't he? <laughs> to provide a spider at that exact moment. He handled it well, Jacob. You handled it well. So if you're listening in, he handled it well. Friends in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As Maureen mentioned a few moments ago, I'm Pastor Alan Oman. My wife Kathy is sitting back there. And we are members of this congregation. Um, I know a lot of you don't know us. Um, we live in Las Cruces, New Mexico. So we are not every Sunday attenders. <laughs> I'm afraid to admit that. Our first time to worship here in this congregation was in Advent, uh, December of this year. And it was for the uh, choir cantata, the choir concert, and it was a beautiful time to be here. And as we were driving back to Las Cruces, Kathy turned to me and said, for the first time since we left Illinois, I felt welcome in worship. Thank you to you for welcoming us 
here. Nadine and Woody visited with us after worship that day, spent a lot of time talking with us. Of course, Pastor Ken is so warm, so inviting, and you are too. You are too. We are here again uh, for Holy Week, uh, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. And again, you welcomed us here in your midst. Hopefully we'll be here more than Christmas and Easter. <laughs> but, you know, we were here and, and you welcomed us and made us feel part of you. And we thank you for that. I am a retired NALC pastor, retired exactly a year ago. This is the first Sunday. The last Sunday I preached and led worship was the last Sunday of July a year ago. So it's been exactly a year, and I'm a little nervous this morning. Um, if I seem a little rusty, yeah, I'm a little rusty, so please be patient with me. But it is a true joy to be here, and I, I thank Pastor Ken for giving me the opportunity to me to come and, and be with you, to, to deliver the message, to preside at communion. It's been a year since I've done that, too, so I'm looking forward to that as well. It's good to be here. You are tr truly a treasure to Kathy and me. Even though we've only been here a couple, three times now, you are truly a blessing to us. I have something here with me this morning, and I mentioned that people in the front row, that in front pews, it's good that they are up front. One person said, please don't smash any watermelons. I don't know if there's a story behind that or not, but uh, no watermelon smash today. But what I have, I'll walk up and down here and show it to you, is a little porcelain um, lighthouse, actually, what it is. If you can't, know, you can't see it very well, and the people um, in the fellowship hall and online probably have trouble seeing it. It is a porcelain lighthouse, and it was made in China, so I assume it's, it's Ming Dynasty China. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Would that it were so. I like lighthouses. Lighthouses fascinate me. And I can imagine this lighthouse, here's a lighthouse here in the, in the keeper's little house next to it. I can imagine this lighthouse being up on a cliff on the ocean, warning the sailors that there is danger here. Perhaps there is a, a, a reef or a, a shoal or something could sink their ships. Or maybe this lighthouse is a lighthouse that is showing the sailors where a harbor is, a safe haven. And so they can come and be where it is safe. The very first lighthouse was a Pharos lighthouse in Alexandria, Egypt. It was actually built several hundred years before Jesus. The very first lighthouse to be built. An amazing lighthouse. So they fascinate me. And this, again, is a porcelain lighthouse. Um, not Ming Dynasty, I'm afraid. So it's probably not very valuable in and of itself. But it was given to me because I like lighthouses. And this lighthouse you might find in somebody's curio cabinet, wherever it might be. This lighthouse also is extra special because it's actually a jewelry box. It opens up. And there's not a lot of room in here, as you can imagine. Uh, you could probably keep a couple of rings in here, uh, a couple small earrings, certainly not the big hoops, um, maybe a necklace or two, some special treasure. Well, I have something in here this morning. Something, a couple things that are treasures to me. Um, they're tie pins, tie tacks. Now, you can't see them. I'll show them up front here. See, it's, it pays off to sit up front. It really does. <laughs> they are not made out of precious metal. Not silver, not gold. There are no precious stones in them, no rubies, no diamonds, no emeralds, nothing like that. They're probably actually made out of pewter or maybe just recycled pop cans. So as far as value in and of themselves, not much. But to me, these two tie tacks, these two tie pins are very special. They're treasures to me. Let me describe what's on here. There are eagles on each one of these, an eagle on each one, and the letters B S A, Boy Scouts of America. And then around the rim of these tie tacks are the words Eagle Scout Dad, Eagle Scout Dad. Our two boys are Eagle Scouts, and they earned that rank. And part of the court of honor in the troop of which they were part was to, obviously, in their Eagle Scout court of honor, they received their neckerchief. They receive their rank pocket patch. They receive an Eagle Scout medal. But also part of the Eagle Scout Court of Honor is the Scouts give to the parents, to the moms an eagle with Eagle Scout mom on it, and then to the dads. These two tie tacks, or one, one from each boy, these tie tacks, Eagle Scout dad. Now, they're special to me, obviously. They're very precious to me because our boys are Eagle Scouts, and they worked hard to earn those ranks. If you have an Eagle Scout in your home or if you're an Eagle Scout, you know 
all that goes into becoming an eagle. And as our boys were reminded at their court of honor, once an eagle, always an eagle. And hopefully they live up to the ideals of being an eagle scout. Well, perhaps you have treasures too. Maybe you have a lighthouse jewelry box like this one. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you have some treasures though. Maybe it's an heirloom you received from an ancestor, a special piece of jewelry. Um, maybe it's something someone gave to you at a special occasion, a wedding, anniversary, wherever it might be, whatever it might be. Some special occasion you have a treasure. Maybe it is a valuable piece of jewelry. Maybe it's simply, something as simple as a tie tack that you receive from somebody who's very special to you. Treasures are important to us, aren't they? Treasures are things that we, we, we want with us all the time. I know you've had forests or fires here in this area. And, and was, the fires are coming. People grab what they can, can't they? What do they grab? Usually photographs, don't they? They're medications. They're important papers. They grab those treasures because their house might burn. They grab what they can. What are some things that, that we value in life? What are some things that we put our hearts on? What are some things that, that we have our hearts centered on? What are some things that you can think of that we value in life? Family? Family? Pardon? Pets. Pets. Yeah, definitely. Pets. They are very special to us, aren't they? What are some th other things that you value in life? Your home? Your home? Pardon? Your home movies. Yeah, photographs, those types of things. Food, clothing, home, uh, the ability to earn a living. Those things are important to us, aren't they? And as I think of those things that we value, those things we've set our hearts upon, I think of the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer. Now, some of you maybe uh, heard Pastor Ken's sermon last Sunday. He referenced the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer. So I'm kind of following up on, on Ken's sermon from last Sunday. Good job, Ken. Listen to his sermons. They are really good sermons. I enjoy listening to them. So listen to his sermons. But you remember the fourth petition? Give us this day our daily bread. And do you remember what Martin Luther said about the fourth petition? Do you remember your catechism? What does this mean for us? Give us this day our daily bread? God gives. Notice the first words Luther says in the meaning. God gives. God gives daily bread, even without our prayer, to all people, though sinful. But we ask in this prayer that he will help us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanks. Then Luther goes on to say what is meant by daily bread. Daily bread includes everything needed for this life, such as food, and clothing, home, and property, work, and income, a devoted family, an orderly community, good government, favorable weather, peace and health, a good name, and true friends and neighbors, including pets. So read through this list, all these things that we treasure in life because we need them in life, because they're important to us in life, because our hearts are set on those things, God gives. God provides. As Pastor Ken and I were talking about this Sunday and me coming to lead worship here, give the sermon today, we were making sure I had the right readings. And so we were reading through the three lessons for today. We came to today's gospel. And as Pastor Ken and I were reading through that, he lifted up one verse. And it's right in the middle of that gospel. And here's a little bit of parable where Jesus says, it's like a man who, who went to a wedding feast and he left his servants in charge and he came back then from the wedding feast, it was over, and blessed are those servants who are waiting for their master to come. And then Pastor Ken pointed out this verse. And listen to this again. When the master comes and his servants are ready and waiting and looking, he will tighten up his belt and he will have his servants sit down, and he will serve them. And Pastor Ken pointed out how God serves us. Isn't that amazing? When you think of the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread, how God serves us. The Almighty God who created the heavens and the earth, who walks among the stars, 
cares about each one of us and serves us by giving us what we need. He is so gracious. He is so wonderful. And we can have trust in him. We can have faith in God because God is faithful to keep his promises. I'm going to talk more about that in just a few moments. We can trust him. And in today's gospel, Pastor Ken pointed out that God will serve us. He truly does. He gives us his grace, his mercy, his steadfast love. God gives us those treasures that are so important and life-giving to us. What a gracious God we have. What a wonderful God we have. Our response, thanksgiving and praise. I'd like to shift a little moment here and, and just ask you a question. What do you think God's treasure is? A number of years ago, I was leading a nursing home worship service and happened to be that the, what I like to do at nursing home services is to have the text that we had for Sunday morning and use those same texts then at the nursing home. It binds the congregation who worships on Sunday morning with the congregation who gathers at the nursing home on Thursday afternoon. It binds them together. Well, it so happened that particular Thursday, these were the readings. Hard to believe. These were the readings from 15 years ago at that nursing home service. At that service, residents were coming, and there was a re resident who came, a wonderful lady, and she had her nine-year-old granddaughter with her. And to see those two walk in the room was truly wonderful. I'm not sure who was happier, grandma or her nine-year-old granddaughter, to come together. And, and grandma was just beaming, and the nine-year-old was thrilled. She was going to spend the afternoon with grandma. And she loved her grandma, and her grandma loved her. And you could see in them how much they treasured each other. Well, I mentioned a few moments ago, the text for that particular Thursday afternoon was the text for today, today's reading. And I asked the question, what is God's treasure? Without missing a beat, that nine-year-old girl popped up and she, she, she spoke up and she said, us, us. She got it right, didn't she? You and I are God's treasure. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? That's truly awesome. We, you and I, everybody here, everybody throughout the world are God's treasure. John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world. And the Greek word for world there is cosmos. God so loved the cosmos, all of creation. God so loved each one of you that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. The word treasure isn't mentioned there, is it? But truly it's implied, isn't it? God loves us each of us so much we are so treasured by him he will give his son jesus to die on the cross for us john 3 16. philippians chapter 2 the apostle paul also has a passage talking about jesus when he writes in philippian church he says have this mind among yourselves which is yours in christ jesus now listen to this passage how much jesus treasures us Again, the word treasure doesn't occur here, but it certainly is implied. Who, 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 though, who, though he was in the form of God, Jesus being the form of God, he is God, laid aside his divine glory, taking on the form of a servant. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, even to the point of dying, giving his life on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, Paul writes, and given him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How much does Jesus treasure us? He will give his life on the cross. Jesus treasures us so much, he doesn't want to live without us. He will die for us and then be raised on the third day and give us life. Jesus truly treasures us. As I think of Jesus, Jesus is God's crown jewel 
of all the treasures that he gives to us. Yes, he gives us food and clothing and home and shelter and, and work and all these things, but the crown jewel, the greatest, is Jesus. This is how much God is willing to serve us, to give his life for us. God continues to give us gracious treasures as well. One of the best treasures God has given to us is the Bible. I hope you use your Bible. People often ask me when I was a pastor, not often, but occasionally they'd ask me, Pastor, what's your favorite Bible? Of course, they were shopping for a Bible and, and, and they wanted to find out what version I liked, what translation I liked. And I always had kind of a snarky response. My favorite Bible is one that is well used. Well used. Well used. And what treasures we find that God gives to us in the Bible. John 3, 16, that passage from Philippians chapter 2, Jesus laying aside his divine glory, dying on the cross and rising again. The 23rd Psalm, isn't that a treasure? David wrote that Psalm 3,000 years ago, and we still treasure the 23rd Psalm, don't we? It is such a precious Psalm as people are in need, as they've lost a loved one, how that Psalm brings comfort and hope. Today's first reading is another one of those treasures God has given to us. That passage from Genesis chapter 15. Abraham is old here. He's at least 75. We know he's at least 75. He's probably more like 80 or 85 at this point. God appeared to him in a vision. His wife is, is 10 years younger, so she's getting up in years too. God appeared to Abraham in a vision one night and said, Abraham, I'm, I'm your shield. I'm going to bless you. Do you know what's Abraham's response? Kind of a big deal. I don't have any kids. Sarah and I are, are way past childbearing age. We don't have any children. And the Lord says, I will give you a child. Your slave isn't going to inherit. I will give you a child. And then he called Abraham to go out of his tent that night. I hope this evening it's a clear sky. And go out this evening and look at the stars. Try to count them if you can. And that's what God told Abraham. Count the stars. I'm going to give you that many descendants. Now, astronomers are telling us that there are millions of stars, millions of stars in our own Milky Way galaxy, just in our galaxy alone. And astronomers tell us, and they show us pictures from Hubble and James Webb Space Telescope, of millions more galaxies out there. And they are filled with millions of stars. Count them. Count them, God tells Abraham. I'm going to give you that many descendants. Count them. And that last verse, such a precious verse, take out your service folders, if you will. Look at that last verse in Genesis chapter 15. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The writer of Hebrews picks up on that same faith. He believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Look at that second reading there, Hebrews chapter 11. It's going to be hard to find. It's, what I want to point out is halfway in the middle of this whole reading. So go down halfway and across halfway. Right smack in the middle of the reading, you'll find these words. By faith, he received power. Everybody find those? By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren. You know how old Abraham was when, when Isaac was born? Everybody remember? It was 100. Sarah was 90. Do you know anybody who was 100 years old? I, I knew some people who were 100. Anybody who was 90 years old? There, we had a 90-year-old in the last parish. She wasn't going to have any kids anymore. Way past childbearing age. And yet when Abraham was 100, Sarah was 90. Isaac was born. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. He considered him faithful who had promised. You and I can trust in the Lord. He is faithful to keep his promises. One of the most important promises God made to Abraham is in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. 
encourage you to read that when you get, get, go home this afternoon. Read Genesis 12, 1 to 9. God made a wonderful threefold promise to Abraham at that time. He promised to give Abraham land. Abraham was a nomad, no place to live. In fact, it's when Sarah, his wife, died, he had to buy a burial place. Couldn't even bury his wife. He had to buy a place. I will give you land, descendants. He was 75 years old. Sarah was 65 at this promise. And then, remember later on, he was, he was 100, she was 90. And thirdly, God said, I will bless you that you will be a blessing. Blessed to bless. I'd like you to learn that threefold promise. Just, just repeat after me. First of all, land, land, descendants, descendants, blessed to be a blessing, blessed to be a blessing, land, land, descendants, descendants, blessed to be a blessing, blessed to be a blessing. That threefold promise weaves its way all the way through the Bible. When you understand that threefold promise, the Bible makes a whole lot more sense. God gave Abraham and Sarah Isaac when they were way too old. Isaac and, and, and Rebecca had Jacob and Esau. Jacob was the one through whom the promise was to go. God repeated that threefold promise to Jacob, to, to, eat, to, to Jacob and then to his 12 sons. And finally, the Exodus is all about fulfilling God's threefold promise of land, descendants, blessed to be a blessing. He's fulfilling that threefold promise. God's people were now slaves in Egypt. And he heard their cries. And if you read the Exodus account closely, it says that God remembered his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he brought his enslaved people out of slavery in Egypt, Egypt to the freedom of the promised land. He remembered his threefold promise. That threefold promise goes through David as part of that. King David, his sons, the land, and, and the prophets are part of that threefold promise as well. Sometimes the people forgot that they were blessed to be a blessing. They forgot they, that they were blessed to bless. The prophets spoke out to that and said, you, you, you people are, of God are supposed to be a blessing. Be a blessing. God has blessed you. And then in the New Testament, this, this threefold promise takes on a whole new meaning. We see it in today's second reading, where God again is fulfilling that threefold promise in amazing ways. The land, now the land that God, the, the, is not a, a chunk of ground, it's not the nation of Israel, it's not the Vatican in Rome, it's not the United States of America. The land that God promised to give us is not a piece of earth, it's the heavenly kingdom. God's kingdom, and God promised descendants to Abraham. You and I are descendants of Abraham by faith, by faith. The Apostle Paul talks about that in Romans and Galatians, referring specifically to Abraham, how we are descendants of Abraham by faith. And thirdly, you and I are blessed to be a blessing, to give of ourselves, to give of our time and talents for other people. It's amazing how God has given us these great treasures. Our response, praise and thanksgiving. Our response is to come together in worship and to receive his blessings here. Our response is to care for each other in the communion of the saints. Our response to being baptized in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, to be joined to Jesus' death and resurrection, is to live that baptismal covenant. In a few moments, we'll gather around this table. Jesus will again give us himself in the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. What a blessing. What a treasure this is. When Kathy and I come here to worship, we can receive Holy Communion with you. And we rejoice in that and give thanks for that. A tremendous blessing. And God has blessed us to be a blessing to others. He gives the great gift of prayer. We can pray for ourselves, for others. We can pray giving glory to God. And God calls us into service. Look at the shape of the cross again. As we look at the cross, God comes to us in the cross. And then he sends us out like arms of the cross in the name of Jesus to be a blessing to others. As I look through the bulletin and I see all the things on the green sheet that just fell down here, all the things in the green sheet this congregation does. As I read through the newsletter and see the ways that this congregation is a blessing, giving money to so many places, rolling up your sleeves and helping like the Habitat bill back in July. So many things this congregation does. 
We are blessed to be a blessing. God has given us treasures, and we in turn can share those treasures with others. And of course, the greatest treasure we have is Jesus. Let us share Jesus with others. Amen. Shall we pray? Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank and praise you for all of your blessings. We thank and praise you that what you give to us are the treasures we need in life. And Lord, we thank you especially that you've given us your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the crown jewel of all the treasures you've given. Lord, we thank you for the life that we have in him, life now and life with you forever. Keep us firm in faith, knowing that you are faithful to fulfill your promises. What you say you will do, you bring about. Increase our faith, trusting in you. And Lord, as those who have received this threefold promise, the kingdom of heaven, this being a descendant of, of Abraham by faith, bless to bless, enable us to reach out with those blessings to others, to share those blessings with others, those treasures with others, so that they too will be brought into your kingdom and rejoice and give thanks that they are made your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Continue with the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 105 at the front of your red hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, your Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, thank you for your ultimate treasure, our Lord Jesus Christ, and for treasuring us. Be with us as we live our lives as your precious treasures. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, your kindness caused the light of the gospel to shine among us. Extend your mercy now, we pray, to all the people of the world who do not have hope in Jesus Christ. 
that your salvation may be made known to them also, and that all hearts would turn to you. We pray that you work through Didi and Serafina in their work in the Congo. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, we call to mind before you all those whom it would be easy to forget, the homeless, the sick, the aged, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Draw, draw our hearts to you, O God. Guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our wills, so that we may be yours completely. Use us as you will, always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you are our strength in all times. We ask that you would be with those we mention now who need strength and comfort under your care. Electa, Jane, Sadie, Duane, Kathy, and all those who we mention silently in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, when through neglect, preoccupation, or wrongfulness, we turn our backs on you. Teach us to see, to listen, and to walk with open hearts so that we can welcome you and answer you in grace and love. You call us to follow. Lord, in your mercy, Hear Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also you. Please share peace with one another.
Please stand if you are able and join me in saying the offering prayer. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good. For communion today, we will have communion by stations. The bread will be di distributed from the center of the aisle and then the wine on each side. So during the communion time, and please come up and, and receive the bread and then go uh, and receive the wine. If you would like to have gluten-free bread, please let me know that. Um, I, I don't know who might want that. I know there are some. Just please indicate that to me. I apologize for going so long in the sermon. Um, I just sometimes get carried away. I apologize for that. Um, one thing I'd like to point out, in the communion liturgy, um, after the great thanksgiving, the dialogue we have, we have the proper preface, uh, and then we sing what's called the Sanctus, the holy, holy, holy. You might recognize those words from Isaiah chapter 6, where the seraphim are around the throne of God, continually singing holy, holy, holy. Or from Revelation chapter 4, we have those same creatures again around the throne of God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is, who was, and who is to come. When we join in this communion, when we sing holy, 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 we step into God's throne room. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty awesome. That is amazing to be in the presence of God. And God comes and meets us here in and with the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. Jesus gives us his resurrection life again in the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Also lift up your hearts. Lift we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and joy, that we should at all times and all, in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful Father, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of heaven, all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Thanks be to God.
Let us join in the Lamb of God. Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with his bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his day shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.